Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Today, it's a hot Monday, and we're breaking down the Oscars. Who won, who was snubbed, and all the backstage drama. Plus, our all-star fashion panel is back, calling out all of the night's biggest hits and misses. And all the latest juicy hot topics you can handle. Now, here's Wendy. Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topic. <laughs> so, who's sleepy today? Because we watched the Oscars last night. I mean, even the Oscars, wasn't it almost four hours? Yeah. I fell asleep at some point. I was in and out, you know, watching all kinds of stuff on TV. So congratulations to the Birdman movie. Yeah. yeah. They won for Best Picture. And Julianne Moore won for her, her first Oscar, actually, for Best Actress. I'm so shocked that this is her first Oscar. You know what I'm saying? She's so A-list that I would've thought that she won. Well, it just goes to show, awards don't really matter. It's your positioning, you know? And then Patricia Arquette won uh, the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. Quite frankly, quite frankly, I think she should've won for Best Actress because somebody who commits you know, to 12 years to making a movie, that's insane. That's like people who gain 500 pounds for a role. Like they need, they need the, the highest honor. But uh, congratulations to you, Patricia. And so I'm switching back and forth. Then I see John Legend in Common won for best song. And, um, and they had um, everyone in the audience crying. Such a great performance. Yeah, congratulations to them, Oscar winners. Look, people can hold it. Yeah. I didn't cry for that song, but do you wanna know what did get me crying? Lady Gaga performing. Oh, oh my gosh. She, uh, she looked like Stephanie instead of Lady Gaga. Just, and you forget that you know, she really is an attractive girl. The hair, the, the skin, the wig, her voice. Her, her voice, like really? I, Gaga. <laughs> Gaga, you sing as beautifully as Susan Boyle. Why have you been wasting our time with that rah, 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 rah? Like, although I'm sure that's how her fans like it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, um, we're gonna break down the Oscar fashions with our panel of experts later on in the show, so don't go far. I stayed off social media all weekend long on account of I was busy doing other things, like trying to wean myself off social media. <laughs> However, uh, that's what the team is for. So they told me this morning, so this thing with Amber Rose and the Kardashians is really exploding now, huh? Well, I did all my research before the show and this is really, really ugly. Okay, remember, last week it was Chloe calling Amber a stripper. And then Amber uh, called Kim a whore. Well, so far, I don't see anything wrong with any of this. <laughs> I mean, because Amber admits to stripping as early as being 15 in Philadelphia and we know how Kim got famous. Okay, well, so now Kanye is all up in grown women's business. And we talk about this, you know, like we hate when our men get involved with our girl fights. I just, I hate it. I think that there's a time and a place for a man and it's not in between two women. Here's what he says. It's very hard for a woman to wanna be with a man who's been with Amber Rose. You know what I'm saying? I had to take 30 showers before I got with Kim. Well, here's the deal. What he's saying is that Amber's dirty. Well, how did, excuse me, remind me again how we got to know Kim Kardashian? Uh, I feel like, I feel like 
Kanye has no filter. He should not be a part of this. Kanye, you're the one with the most to lose in this because Amber knows where the bones are buried. You see what I'm saying? Get her a little too turned up and watch how she gets on social media and airs all of your laundry, Kanye. I mean, it'd probably be stuff that's surprising to most people, but not to me. I've been on that case for years, you know. Anyway, so then, then Amber, Amber um, tweeted back, wait, 30 showers, but Kim let Ray J bleep on her? Give her a pearl necklace. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So then Amber came back and says, this is all so disgusting. I mean, it's entertaining for us, but you know. <laughs> After all these years, I never, this is what Amber says to him. After all these years, I never snitched on you and I don't plan on starting now. We loved each other once, so I won't do that to you. I won't do, I won't do you like that. I'll leave that up to the Kartrashians to humiliate you <laughs> when they're done with you. You know what? It's like Amber was about to leap and tell us some, something really good and seedy. And then she caught herself and probably deleted it and then ended up making a statement like this. Amber? <laughs> Amber, if there's anything that you wanna say. Just like I say about Amber, she's got nothing to lose. So therefore, um, and she's got nothing to lose and everything to gain by airing dirty laundry, writing a book, coming on Hot Topics or, or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, stay out of the business. And uh, if you wanna see more of Kanye, well, he's gonna be at the Visionary Awards uh, for the BET Honors tonight at nine o'clock on BET. Oh, he's getting the Visionary, he's getting the Visionary Award. In the meantime, Amber, you've got bigger beef to handle. That battle with your ex, Wiz Khalifa. Oh. Amber, what happened? Or Wiz, did you just set this up and take the pictures to make us feel sorry for you? because there are two sides to every story. So Wiz planned a huge second birthday for their son, Sebastian, they call him Baby Bash. But there was one thing missing from the party, Baby Bash. <laughs> Amber was supposed to bring the boy over, but Amber was a no-show with the baby. There were guests there, cake, people, balloons, a second birthday. Now, on one hand, Wiz could have just taken this picture as a setup so that the court system would be perhaps wanting to give him more custody or full custody, because you know they're doing a custody thing right now. Or maybe Amber really didn't bring him over because she's taking out however she feels her animosities towards Wiz on the poor little boy. He's the cutest baby in the world. I just don't see a mom doing that though, you know what I mean? I just don't see a mom um, letting a two year old, because they're so cute at that age, they're such little goobers, and I just, don't, I just don't see a mom doing that. Amber, you need to focus on custody as opposed to this Twitter feud, because I'm telling you some of the things that you're exchanging with the Kar Kardashians. Some of the things that you're exchanging could probably might be able to be used against you in a court of law, and that includes the dental floss while you have a beautiful body. That just until you get custody, you need to stay off Twitter and keep your clothes on and focus, focus on custody. So, shocking news we all heard over the weekend. Baby Blue Ivy might have a secret brother, yay! And he's 21! And his name is Ramir. All right, everybody relax, okay? Just, just relax. I don't think that there's a story here. Everything seems fishy about this, but like we say, there's three sides to every story. Here's the boy. He looks more like Usher than Jay-Z. Do you think he looks like Jay Clap? Do you think he looks like Usher Clap? All right, well here's the skinny. The boy is 21, he lives in South Jersey. His name is Ramir and he's suing Jay-Z to force Jay-Z to take a paternity test. Well, I was watching the ID channel over the weekend and, and, and you know, the cops needed DNA from a bad guy who was raping girls. And so what they did, the man would not go in and take the test. He wasn't forced to take the DNA test. So the cops got smart. They were like, you know, I'm coming over to your house for lunch. The cop had like a Mickey D's bag or something like that and a, and a, a cup with a straw in it. All he needed the bad guy to do was just take a sip from the straw. Did you see that one? Were you watching? You saw it too? It was good, right? It was real clever. Yeah. We love the ID channel here at Wendy. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, 
All right, so anyway, back to the boy in the origin. Apparently there's this woman and her name is Wanda. And Wanda um, and Jay-Z um, hooked up in 1994. And at that time, Wanda apparently was also hooking up with somebody else. Don't judge. <laughs> Anyway, hooking up with somebody else. So then the woman thought that the somebody else was the father, so the man had been paying the child support and supporting this boy all these years. Well, now that the boy is 21 years old, he um, is taking it upon himself to reopen the case because the, the DNA came back um, recently that the man is actually not the father. Oh. So according to Wanda, then I guess the father is Jay-Z. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know what to say except for perhaps Taking the DNA test would be the best thing. In our morning meeting, some of my staffers were saying, no, well, uh-uh, because then that just opens up the door for everybody to be throwing paternity suits to everybody. Your man, your man, your man, and DNA tests to be flying every place. But you know what? The easiest way to shut this down, I mean, it was the front page of the newspaper here in New York on Friday. It, it, this story is so juicy, it's not even a part of the entertainment report. You know how every newscast has the entertainment report? It's part of the regular news. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. And, I'm sure this is causing marital problems yeah. to what they say is an already strained marriage. You know, it's not that he cheated on Beyonce to have this boy. I mean, it was a, was it, wasn't that back during the big pimping days? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, he was becoming, a, well, 1994, somewhere around there. Anyway, um, I'm not saying that it's right. All I'm saying is, yes, he was probably dipping his stick in a lot of places at that particular time. <laughs> And, and maybe this boy is his and maybe it's not. If it's his, doesn't mean he ran out on the boy. It means that this is all coming to light, I guess, for all of us and him. So you'll owe 18 years of back child support. And um, fortunately, you have the money to pay it, Jay-Z. Um, that'll be one less thing that you and Beyonce fight about. Because I was reading like in the magazines, you know, she's saying, or they're, they're saying that if this is true, then their marriage is over. But this would have been a mistake that he did not know about, you know? Anyway, Ramir um, has a fundraising site. Well, so far, he's raised $50. <laughs> the boy needs sneaker money and he, the college tuition. And by the way, yes, he wants to be a rapper. Oh. This is a very, very fishy story, but I can tell you one thing. $50 was on there from last night and we checked this morning and it's still the same 50. <laughs> After the show, I think, do we want to donate? Maybe? Oh. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Uh, do you, all right, clap if you think that this story is so fishy it needs to go away. And you know, I love a good scandalous paternity story, but Ramir, sit down, <laughs> really. <laughs> Hillary Duff has just filed for divorce finally from, not finally as in, you know, yay, but finally as in, you know, she and her ex hockey playing husband, Mike, they were married um, for um, how many years? Married in 2010, so five years. Five years. years. Yeah. But when they started out, dating and stuff, you know, he was a hockey player. And then he tricked his knee, and that's the thing with the sports. As soon as you trick something, everything goes down the drain. And I could imagine that sports players have a lot of aggression when that happens, because it's like, oh my gosh, I've been playing hockey since I was in kindergarten. This is all I know. And now I got this beautiful wife who's successful, you know, this trick me, and I don't feel like myself, you know? So they tried, they were separated for a year, and they dated in between. I mean, they were out on Halloween, Valentine's Day, they went to Coachella together. Um, there they are, having fun, she's dressed like a princess, they, they have a, a baby, and so they tried to make it work. But Mike, you messed it up for everyone. See, that's what the alcohol does, though. So Mike was at uh, Mastro's in California, in Beverly Hills, and reportedly he was spotted flirting with a lot of other women. Oh. And loud and, you know, liquored up and out of sorts and everything. So Hillary found out about this, and I guess she said, you know what? Between the strain we've already been having and your inability to control your party, um, you're, bye. So they're, di they're divorcing. <laughs> Another weekend has passed. I still have not seen Fifty Shades of Grey. Am I the only one? No. Clap, if, clap if you haven't seen it. I'm so shocked. I thought we were those people. <laughs> clap if you want to see it. Clap if you're just going to wait for it to come out on pay-per-view. I, I just can't find the proper person to see it. Like my husband doesn't want to go. I can't take my son. Mommy, I was thinking maybe you and I can make a girls' excursion when you come up here this week. Is it okay to see that with your mom? Yeah. What about your mom and your dad? No. Creepy.
Anyway, Fifty Shades of Grey star Dakota Johnson was dumped by her boyfriend. Aww. Well, he can't handle her heat, so he might as well get out of her kitchen, <laughs> right? I mean, this girl, um, I never knew who she was, and now we know that she's the star of this movie and the daughter to Melanie and Don Johnson. Apparently, her new fame is becoming too crazy for him. Well, you wanna know what? That's what a man does. Then you back away gently, as opposed to, you know, breaking our hearts later on down the road. You know what I mean? I, 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 I don't know who this guy is, but I like him. Do we know who he is? No. no. Nope. But, you know, she's got a lot of heat right now. It's not, no word on whether it's the heavy sex scenes in the movie that made him break up. It's just more about, like, the paparazzi being everywhere and, and her um, having to travel all around to promote, pr to promote this movie. And I guess it's, you know, they can't just, you know, dip into the restaurant anymore. Now it's a scene, you know, because it's the hottest movie around. So that's what people do. When you realize you can't support something, then just be a man or a woman and back away. Yeah. <laughs> besides, besides, you know, he's 27 and she's 25, and she, so she probably does need to focus on the career because, you know, they're doing a second sequel and a third sequel to this also. So she's going to have a little heat with her for quite some time, and hopefully, um, you know, her career will take off like a rocket, but she won't forget to circle back around and look for love at some other time, though. Yeah. <laughs> so... I like the idea that Clint Eastwood is 84 and he still loves being married. Yeah. yeah. You know, he, he likes him young and uh, he just got a divorce in December. Now, you know, he's now dating this 51 year old divorcee named Christina and they aren't married, they aren't engaged, but he likes the idea of moving their relationship in that direction. Now he's, this would be his fifth marriage. His fifth, Third marriage with seven kids by five women. Yes. <laughs> hey, hey, white people. White people aren't the only ones. What is it? Third marriage. Uh -huh. seven, seven kids, kids by five seven women. Seven kids by five women. <laughs> Get to. But you know what? He's still working. Didn't he direct one of the big movies? Birdman? Yeah, so he's still celebrating. His, his back is straight. He, uh... I like that. Would you get married at 84? Yes. I, I would want my parents, you know, if they weren't with each other, I would want one of them to be married at 84 because what you don't realize is that when your parents, when they are not occupied, they drive us crazy. <laughs> like, right? Like, like, no, not for nothing. When your parents are not busy, all they spend time doing is on the phone with you asking you what you're doing. <laughs> So for as much as you might be jealous because your dad ran off with another woman because maybe your mom and dad got divorced or whatever or your mom's got a new boyfriend, be happy because the busier they are, the less they bother us. <laughs> so Nicole Richie gave herself a hair makeover. It's our hot shot of the day. It's brought to you by Xenadrin. Hit it. I think it fits her personality, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And everybody can't wear a little tiny hair like that. So, see, I think it's better, this hair is better for her than this hair right here. Oh, yeah. This hair right here is like, like your hair lady that they just showed, which is a cute hairstyle, but you're not an edgy rock star. Uh-huh, you. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? It's cute. But if you're an edgy rock star, you know, with you know, running around and trying to create clothing and stuff, then I think we like to see something a little bit more edgy. And it's good for her, because she's a little tiny thing. She's only like four feet 11, and she's really, 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 really skinny. Hairstyles like this don't look good on everybody because like a bigger girl, she'll look like a snowman. You know, <laughs> little tiny thing, then bigger than big, you know what I mean? So big girls with the real short hair, it's like snowmanish. that's all. But this looks nice, uh, Nicole Richie. Yeah.